Okay. Yeah, let's get back into it. So I haven't streamed in a very long time, and I'm hoping like all the settings that are supposed to make this magical thing of pushing your desktop out to people, uh, they're working okay. I've had to mess with my mic all day today. Um, let me just close this guy. And uh, so why are we streaming again? Like, that's a question. <laughs> like, we're ba basically, I want to build apps again. I, I was not having fun doing uh, the the thing I've been doing for a while, which is doing retail sales uh, and sort of like building brands out in that space. And this seems like a lot more fun to me. So I'm going to kind of put a little clap mark there and say, let's talk about what we're going to build. You can get an idea of what the project is if you do bang project. I think it'll throw a link in the chat. Let's see. So you can just, we're going to look over this thing. Nope. Doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. So <laughs> sorry. I, uh, I got an image here that you can get somewhere, but not here. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be standing up over the course of the next, uh, maybe three months, maybe less. I'm not the worst developer, so I might be able to get this done in a month. I might be able to get it done in two months. Who knows? Uh, but we're going to be standing up a platform as a service, which is one of the most ambitious things you can do, like the scale goes software as a service, like platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and infrastructure as a service, that's like AWS. We There's no way, what the hell was that noise? Oh, okay. So we got that noise. Um, there's no way we're going to be able to like for real do a infrastructure as a service thing. I don't, we don't have billions of dollars. Um, software as a service, like everybody can make those, but platform as a service. So what is, what is that in a, in a nutshell, a platform and a service makes interfacing with the infrastructure stuff a lot easier. So if AWS or DigitalOcean is scary to you, we are going to make it unscary. We are going to create a application which covers a local development environment. So you, you can spin up PHP or Rails or Node or any one of these services inside its own little container that's not going to sit on your on your shell. It's not going to run on top of Windows. It's going to be its own little computer on your inside of your computer, like some sort of inception thing where you can do all the work that you need to do. You can turn on databases. You can turn on configuration stuff. You can turn on whatever you need to turn on. And then that little contained environment, you develop on it, you can then send that to AWS. So instead of doing a thing where you're like FTP over to AWS or using some secure thing to stick your project there, this will bundle that local environment and then just stick it there. And once it's there, we're going to make it so you can scale it. So one button clicks to create component scaling so you can scale you know, databases, you can scale your CPU workers, you can scale your, your just standard, like your load balancer stack. All that will be set up automatically, part of the project. We're just gonna make it like the easy mode of web development. And the reason I'm doing this uh, is kind of interesting. So we'll come back to this document in a minute, but just to kind of like clear out why we're doing it. There was a project that did this. There was an actual startup that did this called Nanobox. Some of you may be familiar with Nanobox. Nanobox did this service through a command line. And like we built a lot of stuff on Nanobox. On this stream, we built a ton of stuff. So if I pop a command line and even just ask it, like, what do I have for Nanobox projects is on, on here? It's going to have a list of like... <clears throat> Hey, Shark, thanks for stopping by, man. It's going to have a list of like, look at all this stuff on here. Like, these are all projects. Some of these are projects with oh, System32. That's interesting. Um, some of these are projects that were scaled into very, very complicated situations. This one right here, the the app that we built on stream, there's like the last app we built on stream. This had, this was like a 10 instance server. It was the basic requirements for something that you think may have to scale. And this was all being managed. Nanobox did it. Like it, it was a fairly cheap service to use. Nanobox is gone. It's gone. They had great adoption. They had a great product. And if you go to use it now, I can still get in. I can still get into my back end. But Nanobox was acquired by DigitalOcean for an undisclosed amount of money. 
I have I have absolutely no idea what DigitalOcean's plans for Nanobox are, but I guarantee the plans do not include sticking this stuff on AWS. Why would DigitalOcean have a tool they could deploy to their competitor? They wouldn't. So I know some information about what happened here. And I can talk, hey, Asbo. Hey, Asbo. It's been forever, man. I have some information about sort of like what happened. And I've got to be, like, I don't have to be careful with it. I think that it's it's fairly known information. Um, essentially, the Nanobox team moved over to DigitalOcean in an acquisition hire. So an aqua hires when it just moves over. And like they take all the employees. Hey, Nick. I'm going to need your beta testing, Nick. Uh, <laughs> they, they, it's got all the employees and they just decided we're going to do whatever we're going to do with it. So this artifact of what this does, you see all this stuff? Like this is what it's going to do. It, this is what we're going to do because there's another side of the story. So they're going to do all this stuff, like all the scaling, The we're going to re replicate all of these things and we're going to build it ourselves because Nanobox is gone. We need to replace it. Now, here's the silver lining on this whole story because there's there's thousands of users right now who do not have access to this, okay? There's people that are freaking out because they have, kind of like I have, a very complicated hosting scenario that they don't wanna manage, I mean, and they, they now are gonna lose the ability to manage it. They have pushed back the sunset of Nanobox because they don't wanna piss these customers off, these former customers. So what we have as a scenario to cover this is like one of the best things ever. So I'm gonna pull this up. We have Microbox. Microbox. Microbox is a open source MIT licensed, Oop. which says you can use it for free. You're allowed to sell it. You're allowed to do whatever you want with it, as long as you maintain on this particular repository the open source license. That's all you have to do. On this particular repository, you have to say it's still free. You have to say it's still open. We have to keep it in a public place. So Microbox is maintained by, by a, a, nanobo a former Nanobox engineer who didn't go to DigitalOcean named Dan. And Dan, uh, we've had a conversation with him is really excited about the opportunity to get this going again. So what he's going to do is Dan is going to continue to stand up this thing. He's going to slowly migrate it away from Nanobox as a code base and into Microbox, which will just be a open source version of Nanobox. Because again, the last thing that happened here is look at this latest. Oh, this is a different box. But if we go to like one of the other repositories that doesn't get a lot of hits to it, and we say, well, what was the last commit on this thing? Oh, great. Now I can't prove my point. Uh, and let's just hope I hit one of these things. Yeah, there it might be the README or the license. So Tyler, who is the founder of Nanobox, got the AOK -okay from DigitalOcean to open source an entire code base. Okay. An entire commercial code base went MIT and abandoned. And completely abandoned. Yes, yeah. And so we're looking for help with this. Like Dan is going to head up the, the open source components and we're going to head up the rest of it. So it's going to be like the the interface between the user and uh, and the software itself. So Nanobox runs on a command line. We, we're not cool with that. We're going to replace the command line with a GUI. So we're going to create a nice, beautiful desktop uh, GUI that'll do all the things that the command line can do that can report on the things that the command line are doing and make it so it's like a one, a one button thing. So we're going to make this really polished. We're going to turn it into a product and we're going to sell it. So that's our goal. And we just need to get like these things covered. Now, if you want to say like, well, couldn't we just make our own nano box and not have to deal with Dan? Dan's a lovely person, but like, couldn't we do that? Yeah, we could, we could. And it was actually something that like we considered going into this to just say, well, how much stuff is this doing? How, you know, it's a repo that we got for free though, with 1700 commits on it. It's a, a bunch of repos, 155 repositories worth of code. This is millions of dollars of code. No joke. 
I mean, if we were to jump in and say, like, okay, what if we want a Node.js engine? They've already built it. They already have this stuff all figured out. They have everything there that makes it work, and we don't have to code it. Okay, so it's it's a kind of wonderful scenario. We get to take a product which was doing well as a commercial product that for whatever reason said take all our code and we're going to take it and we're going to use it. So I mean, with that in mind, what are we actually going to build, right? Like we're going to, this is our stream schedule. Let me just get that. There we go. Um, so we're going to go through these phases with it here. But really, this is this is like the nuts and bolts of it. Um, we're going to do everything on Electron and View on the desktop. So we're going to create this desktop GUI, which, again, interfaces with the command line. So we're going to use Electron as the, I guess the, I don't know what the hell it's called. I guess the Electron is the framework. I don't know. I guess it is. It's it's just the launcher. It's the, it's the thing that holds it. And Electron, for anyone who's not familiar, is essentially like a Chrome instance that gets launched and managed by Node. So I've got to learn Node. I've never really coded in Node. I don't think it'll be that hard. I know JavaScript, so I don't imagine we're going to run into any issues there. That's going to pipe in and be be managed by Vue. Now, there's a reason I'm doing Vue, uh, mostly because I think this is actually quite a simple app. Uh, I also don't know Vue. <laughs> so, so we're going to figure this out as we go. I don't think it'll be that hard. Like I think when we were working on our framework for Badger, that was much more in-depth and complicated. So Vue is going to be like a breath of fresh air. From what I can tell, Vue is going to make this um, funner, easier, quicker, you know, tick some boxes. We're going to do a marketing site at some point, <laughs> probably months from now. And we're just going to make, you know, standard marketing site. And then we're going to have a web services platform. So we've got to talk about this. The web services platform is sort of interesting. I have no idea what it needs yet. I have none. Um, we need a way to interface with the adapters. So you can see at the bottom of my screen here, there's all these adapters. Can I make this smaller? Yeah, okay. It's probably still getting cut off. Uh, but there's all of these adapters that we're gonna, we're gonna have, so we're gonna create them, right? So we've got, we've got for the big ones, are definitely AWS. DigitalOcean, we'll see, it'll be interesting, right? Because DigitalOcean just purchased this property, they said, yeah, sure. Just open source it. And, and now we're going to be like sending them, you know, builds in testing. And I, I'm very curious to know how they react to that. I'm very curious because they'll just be seeing them come from IP addresses. Maybe they may see them. We may have these on a web service that'll resolve back. Right. And kind of give away what we're doing. <laughs> like, like it's very possible. I don't know. But these adapters, we're going to have to figure out how exactly they need to be situated because my goal is to do everything on the client. Okay. Everything. There's going to be no website. My eventual, my real goal is like no, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, no external services, but everything like no authentication, um, no, I, you know, like no need for you to log in, basically. No no third party watching over what you're doing. Just you have an app on your desktop that does all this stuff. And I think it's possible because if if Nanobox is very good to, at spinning this stuff up, then it should be able to spin up adapters. It should be able to spin up those API wraps and go talk to AWS alongside your app. Um, so... MAGA is essentially uh, just going to be for VirtualBox. So we're not going to correct any of the problems in the code that existed. Nanobox had an issue getting it to play nice with Docker. So they used Docker for things further down the chain, like further away from local deployment, Docker is utilized. But for that local VM they were only really like they, they supported Docker, but it, it apparently it had a bunch of stuff that could go wrong. So that'll be virtual box. Um, yeah. So again, we're going to see if the web services are necessary. If they are, the web services may just consist of these adapters. Um, but I don't want to put any like user logic there. I don't want it to be like, I don't want to, 
we want to work on the desktop. We don't want it to be like you log in to scale up your your services. Yeah, services. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. little girls making some noise. Um, so for the rest of it, the engines and the hooks, these are just languages that we're going to support uh, for for deployment, for local deployment or whatever. These are these are essentially little things that spin up the VMs. And then we have configuration that we can attach to that. The configuration is done through something called a box file. If you've used Docker, it's like very much in that sort of realm. Um, then the hooks, these are just components that run on those engines, right? And they're, this is pretty much everything you'd ever need. Everything. And we'll make sure, Tora, that we get that WordPress installed for you because, I mean, WordPress. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody on the phone about this today and, you know, we we're joking about it, but it's like, yeah, but how many people like there, there's enough people who want a solution there that like things like flywheel exist. Um, but exactly. WordPress is like a third of the property on the internet. Asbo, uh, dude, you actually came up Asbo in the conversation as I was saying, like, I know a guy who's like the plugin King, you know, like that's what he's built his business around and it actually makes a lot of sense to support something like that because if we can have developers focusing more on, you know, building the applications than deploying the applications, I think everybody's better off. So just from my perspective, if like if I if I went if I go to deploy a website without something like Nanobox or MAGA, no, it's MAGA. Um, if I do that how much time am I adding to my week? You know, how much time am I adding like down the road? Uh, because a service like this, we can, we can manage a lot of things. We can manage like SSL provisioning. We can manage Cloudflare. We can manage, um, we can make sure just that the boxes are load balanced. We can create alerts to notify people when stuff goes down. It's not terribly hard. We're, we're basically trying to get, I don't want to say get rid of, because if you have a DevOps, you know, uh, a DevOps guy or girl or third gender, if you have that DevOps person, they would still have a role with something like this, but it may more like be double checking the work or it would make their, their life a lot easier. If you don't have a DevOps person, well, you probably don't need to hire one because this is just going to take so much off your plate. So if we kind of go through and um, we can talk about the contribution stuff, uh, we're working with this big open source code base at, at Moobox. Um, again, like Dan is maintaining it. He's going to, he's going to spearhead that stuff. He's going to make sure that we understand what we're looking at and he's going to help us kind of like move through the code. I don't know how much work he's actually going to do, how much code he's actually going to do, but he will, he will allow us to commit into that code base and change things as we need them or like set them up more efficiently. As an exchange, what we're going to do for Dan is, is we're sort of going to let him understand how we're solving some of the problems to fill in the gaps that weren't included with the MIT license. Oh, Slayer, you totally should, man. Like this is a fun project because I think, look, it's open source and <laughs> thanks. Thank you so much for this, for the sub. 17 months, Asbo. Thank you, man. Um, so the only thing that we need to worry about, so I got to be a little more cognizant of the size of my face here. Um, the only thing that we need to worry about there really is just understanding what's going on and all the code is working. So we just need to understand how it works, right? The, a the hooks are there. The API is there. Like this is just a matter of implementation now and making it do what we want it to do. Um, I would, I would love also if we could keep that end of it all open source. So if we go in, I think that Dan would love that too. Because really we're trying to help Dan stand up his end of things. Because uh, he's got a lot of work in front of him. So if we can just privatize the GUI, that's it. We're just going to privatize that end of it. The GUI account set up, like payment stuff, that'll be all be in private repos. You guys will see it on stream. It'll never see the light of day. It'll be under a private license. No, People will be able to see it because of Electron, right? Uh, we'll go over that in about one second. Um, but, but like for the most part, like 
everything else, let's keep it open source. Let's add to Dan's monster project because there's pieces that are missing. Uh, there's something called a server agent, which we're Nanobox is going to let us use their server agent for a little while. But the server agent, we only know, we don't know what it looks like. We only know what the API looks like. So, and, and so we've basically got documentation on the API and no code. So we can reverse engineer it from there. Um, but after that, like it's, it's wild west. It's like, we're going to have to make this whole thing. So if we make it, why don't we share it with Dan? So he can use it too. And other people can maintain it. Right. So if you're a developer, or you're looking for a fun project to work on, I would love for you to work with us. This isn't, this is open source. So it's not even like, you don't even need to talk to me, just make issues. We'll figure things out. Um, I would also love to get somebody that, or, or some people around this that can help us maintain the guides because guess what's not gone? Nanobox is, is gone, but the guides aren't. And really we don't need like this. We don't need this as guides because truthfully we're going to replace a lot of this stuff, right? Like let's jump in and see like if I was going to run a Ruby project and I'm going to run Rails. So what we're going to do on our end is we're going to make this really easy. It's just going to be like start a new project, start a Rails project, and then all you need to do is like select stuff. So we're going to have form builders and wizards based off of these documents that'll help get people set up and running. So we're going to, you know, these commands, we're going to run them. Um, these little config files called box files, we're going to build them. Okay, so this is stuff we're going to handle all of this. And someone might need to go in though and figure out like, like what do I do? How, how do I do some of these things? Like if I wanted to, if I wanted to do it manually, how are we going to do it? So this is like in the box file, this little chunk of code here, which is YAML, YAML code, um, which is kind of, I, I don't, maybe we should evaluate if YAML is the right way to do it, but I think YAML is fine. It's just this little indented language. So it's saying, data.db, that's the name of a thing, has a thing inside of it. There's like a key value pair. The key is image. The value is this guy. And that's going to go and grab that code and stick it on the box, just like that. But we want people, again, to be able to, you know, like see how this stuff works under the hood because a lot of times you need to do some weird stuff and having access to what the box file configuration variables are is a big deal. Because on projects that like we've done, we've had 50 line long box files and we kind of didn't, like some of the stuff you just don't know what it's doing, like so, unless you look it up. But you can see there's so much stuff. This is all coming in, all of it. We're going to have all this stuff. Uh, so somebody that would know this stuff really well and like be able to help us kind of get the format that makes sense would help a lot. And really, again, it's just really knowing the box file. That's it. Everything else that we do is going to be automated, but the box file is going to be very user editable, very, very user editable. And we may want to just kind of like do best practices, like, but it's all going to be buttons they're pressing. They're going to say like, I want to add a worker, boom, press a button and we'll write that into the, the YAML file. Oh, congratulations, Slayer. <laughs> congratulations, man. Um, and welcome to the channel, Alice. Yes. Yeah, so we're getting into web dev. Well, it's more like software dev, software engineering. Uh, so you got to get this idea, though, that like we're going to need these people or people. It could just be me. Who knows? I don't know. It's probably going to end up just being me. But, <laughs> but we need to maintain those, those, those things as we modify them because as part of the open source package, we also got the guides. Um, and, of course, we need alpha and beta testers. So if you're interested in using this app, I will make a deal with you. And that is if you alpha beta test it, you can use it for free. Okay. And we're going to limit that to a few people, but like Nick and Slayer and a few of you, you guys that are watching are, you are excellent beta testers. You know how to poke holes in things. I would love to have you poke holes in this thing. Um, I've never built an Electron app before, and I feel like it's going to be fairly contained and easy, but I just want to make sure there's nothing stupid that happens. So if we talk through, like, let, let's talk about the Electron view component really quick. Um, Electron was a choice I made. I definitely evaluated everything I could. Um, 
<laughs> tour. Uh, I definitely evaluated a lot of different options here. Like there was uh, QT and then there's uh, things like Flex that are pretty much gone now. Um, there, you know, there's, you could just write the thing in, in, um, in, in visual basic, like a lot of other things you could do. What's nice about Electron is that it's super supported and it's super easy to use. What's bad about Electron, let's, let's talk about what's bad about Electron real quick. Here's uh discord. Okay. We're going to just do a dive into discord because this is a billion plus dollar company. Let's look inside discord. Oh, there it is. Now we're in it. We are looking at the local application state right here. Just right there. It's for you. Do you want it? There it is. Okay. If you want to see how they built it inside of here, well, well, you got to dig a little bit, but it's, it's in here, right? Like here's all the discord code. Now, if you go to the console, you can mess around here. Oh, hold on a second. Don't do it. <laughs> right please like and so they're aware they're aware you can dive in i don't know why i don't know why maybe they're like hey go work for us no thanks um but like you can get right in right and and this is kind of a scary thing with the electron apps there are ways to disable at least this thing being opened the way i just opened it so i opened that by hitting a key combination that's it but this is pretty scary right because like if you wanted to control authentication, this is where you'd kind of control it in the local storage um, or you'd break into sessions, right? But they're not even using sessions. So you would, you kind of like, I'm scratching my head at how we, how we obfuscate this, like in a local only environment. Like if we said you have to pay $10 to use the tool um, and that $10 thing changed a boolean that said is it paid or is it not paid from true to false or false to true then what's going to prevent somebody who's a developer because that's who we're selling things to from coming in and being like let me just change that because that's this is local storage you can change it there's nothing preventing this stuff being changed right have a scene start no false okay well now it's set to false <laughs> like like that's all it takes that's all it takes and granted, they're probably doing some stuff here um, to, to get around. Like, they probably do auth servers and stuff like that. But that means that, yeah, because, well, it's, uh, Tora, you can if you're really, I, I think you could get into Slack if you wanted to, but they've shut down that little piece, right? Ex so, so uh, Doll Pavit, why, why do you have to have a name that hurts my eyes like that? Um, Paul David, is it Paul David? And you just decided doll David, because I hope you understand what that does to people. Um, if you, <laughs> if you, if you really, yeah, you're, you're kind of like reliant now on an auth server. So once you have an auth server, like you're going to have to figure out when and how you go and talk to that. And it, it's pretty easy, right. To verify those things. But for all I know, because I don't think it would be impossible. We could go in to the code and change the auth server and just like figure out what the auth server is sending back. Right. It's like, Oh, the auth server just sends back like a status code that says 200. You're good to go. And, and then, and then like you just stand up your own auth server somewhere and figure, and, and you know, 200 good to go. I don't uh, change the auth server in the, in the source code because this is the other piece. All right. You ready for the other piece? Let's look at the other piece. Because it's scary. It's like super scary. So let me open up trusty sublime text. Um, so I had a little hello world thing so I could get used to using Vue last week. Uh, let's look at this. This right here is Discord. All of it. This is the whole app right here. And look, it even maintained the file structure. Like this is real easy to just jump into and create your own Discord. Now, is it like, is it trivial? No, but could one of us get in here and figure out how it worked? Yep. And we could probably do private hosting. There's probably somewhere in here that says it connects to something and we could just change that little thing, right? They got this guy, this massive... This is most of the codes here. This is probably their concat file. 
So they're concatting everything into this sucker. And somewhere in here, there's IP addresses or something, right? Right, there's somewhere in here, there's probably something saying connect to this thing and you just change it and that's all it would take. <laughs> so so if you had uh, the if you had to figure out like well how exposed is this? This is super exposed. This wasn't even hard to do. This was like a command line extraction. That's it. Um, so Lewis, I think you bring up a good point that like they may have done this on purpose. So what can we do to protect this, we could obfuscate, right? We could definitely obfuscate it. Um, but the problem with obfuscation is that strings don't obfuscate, right? So things that like are in quotes, they stay in quotes. So if you had anything in quotes, cause you're going to, unless, unless we have some mad genius way of doing it, uh, everything's exposed. Everything like for someone who's savvy, it's all exposed. Now, there's two ways to look at that, right? One way is, oh man, that sucks. And like, you shouldn't build on top of it. I think the other way to look at it though, is like, look, if somebody wants to pirate it, let them pirate it. Like, it's not going to be everybody pirating it. Like things like Adobe Illustrator, which they're not making money any other way. Like Adobe doesn't have a side hustle where they're selling like enough t-shirts to support their company or something. Adobe Illustrator and Adobe as a company, they make all of their money, well, all most of their money by software sales. So the when someone has that much of a vested interest, that many millions or, or maybe even a billion dollars invested in securing their software, people still pirate it. People can still get around it. They can they can just bypass those things. And sometimes it's trivial. Sometimes like these guys will, will, you know, like say, oh, we got this great new way to protect our software. And the company, there's a company like, like Denuvu, right? That like they specialize in that. And yeah, it might take a, like a week or two for the, these crackers in Italy or wherever they're from, like to get that first thing opened up. But once they do, it's like floodgates and they're like, oh yeah, this software released yesterday. We've got a crack for it today. You're always going to have that. You're always going to have it. So I think we'll just accept it. We could build this thing differently, but do we really want to? Do we want to, do I want to be writing like objective C, you know? Thanks, Christy. So <laughs> this is all new, these noises. Um, so I think we're okay, guys. So if we talk through it, let's just be cool with the stack and we'll roll it. If it's a total mess, it'll be a total mess. Electron looks fun. So we'll talk through the project really quick. So tonight's stream, I'm not doing any work. <laughs> I'm really not doing any work. We're just going to talk through it and kind of create this artifact of the of the project. So one day I can look back on it and say, we had the best intentions <laughs> and it went, this was the original scope. And then that all changed. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so Slayer. And I think enough people looking at a problem, like how do we protect this code? We can figure out. So at least some ways to make the lock harder to crack, right? Just obfuscation alone makes it a mess to work with, right? If somebody goes through and does, they minify and obfuscate, good luck. Like it's, it's you have to unobfuscate, unminify, and then it's still just like a, a jumbly mess um, to do it. So if you guys have any solutions that can help us with this stuff, uh, just write me on Discord or something. Like come into the Discord channel uh, that's called Maga Product Dev and give me the notes because I, I think like I want to evaluate it. I don't want to evaluate it on stream all the time, but I want to definitely like tap into you smart people and like get the crowd help or whatever. Um, so if we kind of let's go through kind of what our scope's going to look like uh, and, and what's what all is going to be in the V1 here. We, we can talk a tiny bit about V2, V3, and maybe it would just make more sense before we do this, just to say like, we're doing a, how, 
it's gonna, is this going to work? Uh, we're just doing a thing. Like, we're making this... Oh, geez. We're making this desktop GUI like so, where we're going to have the servers, you know, all loaded up here. Our projects. Oh, I'm like a two-year-old. There we go. Um, and let me, Okay. So we're going to have projects kind of loaded into this sidebar thing here, you know. We'll probably have like a little like button to create new projects, obviously. And then, you know, over here will just be sort of like your individual project stats, whatever those might look like. That's a pie chart. That's what they look like. Um, and maybe, you know, some statistics running here, some graphity graphs, and like some, some something like that. And you're probably also going to have another type of thing where you can configure stuff. Um, yeah, so Asbo. Yeah, I didn't know about Flyoil until today, but very similar. So you're probably also going to have these things where you can kind of configure things and like, manage that local box, move the box from local to, to deployment. And again, we're going to have this like laundry list. I think, let me, let me find a doc. I have a, a list of all of these things. Um, you have this laundry list of languages though, that we're going to support, which, you know, I don't think it's as hard as it looks. Like when I originally was scoping this, and doing my research, like I've been researching this thing for like three weeks, guys. Like I, I've really just been like, is this the right thing to build? Like what's the risks involved? Like how do we know if this is like going to just blow up on us at some point? Um, so we've really been like trying to evaluate all this. And originally I had said to my myself, like it's going to be a mess to support all the languages. So here's all the languages. Let's make that font a little bit bigger. Okay. And kind of just make this little artboard because that's going to bug me. It's going to bug all of us. Uh, so we have all these languages as support and we're not going to use Myriad Pro. So what do we got? What do we got? Gotham. Uh, we need to find a font for this project. I think we might use Source, Source Sans. Yeah, let's just use Source Sans. Source Sans, although it's not the prettiest font for a UI, it's like one of the best fonts you can use. Adobe Illustrator here uses Source Sans, like these little tiny fonts that you see. That's Source Sans. It, it reads really well all the way down. Um, bro, we can probably add that shit. Um, I got to watch the swears. Got a little kid now. No more swears. Uh, so if you look at this, so we have all these languages. These languages will move into a local server on your desktop. So here's your your crappy lap. Wow. Okay, crappy laptop. Uh, it'll go local. We're going to have a way to configure that through our app. So you're going to launch and configure like right from this interface. I'm sorry, I, I draw like a two-year-old. Uh, so if we have these languages... These languages need to have, obviously, hook support, which is your more, like, these are more like your components on your box, right? So you have all these languages that can all use any combination of these things that go to local, and you spin that up and you dev there, right? So, so some of the things that we'll be covering, it's like, it's going to need to be an interface. It's going to need to, this guy up here is going to need to be an interface. It's going to need to be like everything you would need to do that. A terminal, it's going to need logging. It's going to need, we're going to need to build a log viewer that can consume logs. It's going to have to have local DNS. It's going to have to have um, probably the ability to do hot reloading and stuff like that. So we would like have all these little kind of pieces that we build in and boop, off it goes. Then here's the bread and butter. This can then go through this to what does the World Wide Web look like? I don't, what is the, cl the cloud? How about we just make a cloud? So cloud providers, or oh, it kind of looks like a little turd. Um, and the support that we have out of the box for cloud support, it's, Okay, boop, DigitalOcean, AWS, Linode, all these guys. So we actually have one of the things in here, this libcloud. All right, so libcloud is not, that's not an actual thing. 
that is a language that some of these people are like contributing to because it's a universal language for managing apps and deployments and configurations up on the cloud. Of course, like these guys, I don't, maybe they follow it. I don't know. But LibCloud gives us access to way more than this, way more than these guys. It would be like, it probably the list would go on for days. You just have to figure out like who actually has the support. So not only do we move it over to the cloud, we're also going to be able to scale it. And all, again, all this stuff is happening right through the interface. So, so local, this would be a, but this would be a deployment. Deploy and scale. How, what is the idea for scale here? Do you just multiple, multiple clouds, I guess? Look at all the, there we go. <laughs> That's the best I can do. There we go. It's multiple poop clouds. So the scale is going to, again, take place here. So hopefully we don't need to build a interface like around here that sits on a web server to do this. The idea is going to be this all kind of comes back right here. And so you're just going to say in the interface, give me, give me a box. Okay. Make it multi-component. Okay. Now make it multi-instance. Okay. And you're going to scale this thing up through like these stages. Now, if I actually have some, I, now, again, we can't really use this as... Let me pull this off. Because uh, who knows what's in there. We can't really use this. We, we're only using this to know how they did it. Okay, guys? We're not going to do it like this. This is not how we're going to do it. We're just... I, I, I kind of went through and, and artifacted the entire project. So we can see how DigitalOcean was doing it. I'm sorry. Well, I guess it's DigitalOcean. Nanobox was doing it. And, like, these are my projects. So... You can see, like, this was a multi-instance. This is what multi-instance uh, hosting looks like. Every one of these things is on its own box. It all talks to itself. That's super valuable. So, like, we need to, we, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure out how to make this all talk to itself. And we are getting all five of these things. So we get a logger, which is like, I assume, I don't know. I think it's like a cohesive logging system for all of those uh, different instances. Um, a load balancer, which makes the magic happen. A monitor, which I assume is a monitor thing that like lets you see all these different things. Maybe they all report to the monitor. A message bus, which I assume is communicating between these instances um, and a warehouse, which holds all this stuff. Like it holds like, like file backups, deployment backups. And like, you can see like this thing, this log back, this came over in the MIT. So that's, a, that, that's not a big deal. Um, so we've got all these different things that we can spin up and do, but like, that's a mysterious piece that we're not going to have to touch for like two months. I hope. Maybe not. Maybe this is, like, I don't know. I screwed around with Vue for, like, 30 minutes, and I was, and on Electron, too. Like, I screwed around with that, and I'm like, man, this is so fast. <laughs> like, there is not really that much that's going to go into this. There really isn't. It's just a lot of code that's already done. All the hard stuff's done. Um, So, I mean, we're even going to be building this, like, popped on top of the Nanobox CLI. So we're literally going to be running the Nanobox CLI like through this. And I don't know, maybe I have Dingleberry still installed. Do I have Dingleberry still installed or I, I must have deleted it? Um, but I made an app to prove that you can do this stuff. And it's like so simple. It is so simple. It's like dirty simple. Now, as we develop this and kind of move through the project, if you're in the Discord, I am going to... Um, some of the first stuff that we're going to be taking care of is like automatically updating an app. Uh, so like we might be paying for that guy, but it's going to be this thing just like discord where it says like, Hey, an app update is available and it'll go and grab the update and inject it back in. And we don't have to continually throw out it, the exe files. Um, <clears throat> So you, we're, we're going to, at some point, when we get to that point of being able to update it, 
I will post in the Discord, here's the file. Just grab it, and off we'll go. I will try not to put a Bitcoin miner in there. No guarantees, though, guys. No guarantees. We have a certain revenue target every month. I might put that Bitcoin miner in there. You won't know, though. You won't know. It'll be smartly coded. So, uh, yeah, Slayer, dude, I'm excited, too. I think this is, like, the first time we've worked on something where I feel very comfortable like just saying, Hey, there's this whole portion of it that anybody can contribute to. <laughs> Grace. Yeah. You'll be <laughs> exactly. You'll just, you'll be able to go into the console commands and change the wallet address. <laughs> like, like no problem. Absolutely. No problem. You just, and I just coded you a Bitcoin miner. <laughs> So let's go back to the big piece. So now that we've kind of got this horrible graphic explaining what's going to happen, and I know that we're kind of over-explaining it, or I'm over-explaining it. Look, I haven't written a piece of code for this. I haven't designed anything beyond this sucker, the sweet logo. Um, And let's just talk about the logo for like one second. That's sexy, man. That's a good-looking logo. I know we are stealing things, but I don't care. I think it's gorgeous. I think like this on a hat is a priority. We need to find somebody to make that hat. It doesn't have to have making applications great again. I don't care about that part. I care about that sweet worm on a red hat that I can wear on stream. Somebody make it a real, real thing. I don't, and no crappy quality. It's got to be freaking em- embroidered, you know, <laughs> like it's got to be very good. Mano box. So Torah, here's the kind of thing, man, like, we are basically just going to f- kind of fund Microbox. Microbox, he he has a planned commercial offering, but it's it might not even conflict with what we're doing. Um, he's allowed to commercialize it. I don't know the precise deal that he has with DigitalOcean or, or whatever, but like there, he can monetize this thing. I don't think he's going to have to worry about it though because we're going to send him money we're going to make sure that open source project, not him, but we're going to make sure that open source project gets cut a check from like what we, whatever revenue we make. Um, because it's, it's within our best interest, right? Oh, look at these sweet logos though. Oh, this took like some time. This took some time to go and download all the colors from the NASA style guide. And (laughs) so, The other thing I would love to do is to see if we can, throughout the process of designing this, somehow continually stick, like, these references to NASA, like, into it. I actually have the 1970-whatever NASA style guide. Like, I have that. I have a physical copy of that in the other room. And I should just, we're going to pull that out, and we're going to do it. We're going to do all of it. (laughs) Like, everything that they figured out, we're going to take it. Did you know that that design, the NASA worm logo, I don't know if you guys knew this, that won a presidential design contest. And like, I think Nixon gave it to them. Like that was a nationally awarded thing, that little NASA. I have, I to this day, like don't know why they went to the meatball. I think when I think of the future, I think of like, you know, I think of that symbol, that NASA, well, it's this MAGA now, but I think of that saying NASA, the meatball just not, good to me i don't know why they would have done maybe this was like really gross or something when they started to implement it a lot i don't know but as you can see we kind of started calling it maga box but it, this was before i had the conversation with dan because we were planning on taking over the repo we were planning on just being like we're running the nano box open source thing but dan's totally wanting to do it so that's his thing now i don't know what we're going to call it like maga box maga pass that could work maga works i don't know or just maga i think just maga sounds cool but it's not you know it's not the best thing <clears throat> digital brotion is a horrible name that will get us sued like i will have to leave the country if digital ocean sues this if we get if we get sued by digital ocean we're done yeah any, like they could kill us so let's just hope that doesn't happen. So we we really have to be aware of playing within whatever rules. I don't want to get Dan in trouble. That's not the intention of this. Like if he has to whatever, like protect, like, look, we got to, 
they got a lot of money. We don't. So you don't want to kick that beehive. <clears throat> so let's like, we'll walk through the, the scope here. I've got like, and I guess we can talk about what the, the plan's going to sort of look like as we do this. Um, I'm going to see, let me see if I can, I know I have this image and for whatever reason, like I, the stupid night bot command doesn't work. Can we, let me just see if I can fix that thing. Uh, let's, Oh, okay. I was just hoping it didn't like, you know, do the thing where it says, here's your password. Uh, why is this is this just doesn't turn on anymore. That the project thing, do I have to say, Hey night? Oh, Oh, okay. Are you here, Nightbot Project? There we go. So you guys can look at that image and follow along now. Yeah. I knew there would be like some cobwebs, Torah. Like that was, you know, they're just going to happen. <laughs> like like I, I, I'm pretty pleased with how this is going so far. Uh, my computer hasn't like restarted or the pornography hasn't popped up from the various places where it lives. So I'm pretty happy with the stream so far. And I spent a lot of time guys, like I might not seem like it, but I spent like my whole day today setting this back up and particularly this microphone, just getting this thing to sound right. It was, it was weird. Um, doesn't everybody Torah. Uh, it was just a weird process. Okay. So let's kind of hit the scope of MAGA the phases and I'll try to encapsulate these. If you guys have any questions or like you have any advice or anything that we, you think would make sense to add to these things, let me know. We'll add it in as we go. This is a very living document. You know, um, the first phase that we're going to start like Domani tomorrow is going to be the desktop design. So we're going to start going through those pieces, um, where we can, we can actually like start to see, what the components look like. Now, uh, it's very important that me, this guy right here with the haircut, um, I need to remember that we're using Vue. If I want to give myself a lot of work, I will forget that we're using Vue and create stuff that doesn't work well broken down into components, right? Like that would be a mistake. So everything like needs to sort of transfer over and around with Vue and from what I can tell, and uh, granted, I haven't I haven't dug into Vux yet or whatever that's called, Vux. Can we? We're gonna call it Vux on the stream. Um, I haven't really dug into Vux too much, so I don't. I know that's like state management. Um, I, what I would like to know is there was a pattern that I found called something or another. I don't know. It was something. It was essentially. I think it was a, a the idea of doing a message event bus. So the message event bus means that you can, or something like that, the event messaging bus, it means that like, first of all, it detaches the idea of having these like weird event chains. Um, I think another one of the pieces that you can do, maybe it wasn't the message event, bus. sorry, I'm stumbling through this. The other pieces uh, that I wanted to look at was not having to define the data on the component all the time, because I think that's going to drive me nuts unless you guys say, no, just do that. Cause I would just be worried that we'd be defining the data on a component that needs to go somewhere else. Like if there's a server object, ah, I'm just being a weird guy. I, I'm getting too far into this. We'll figure it out later. So again, we'll probably, we'll start on this tomorrow. We're going to go through this document. I'm going to figure out, you know, basically a higher resolution version of this will happen over the next couple of days. And it'll be based on the launch features and things like that. So that'll be tomorrow. I'm hope I'm thinking because, because we're not, because we're going to be using something like view to do this. I don't think we should get too deep into it. I think we should almost like treat this like you would treat a, what do you call it? Like, like a bootstrap template where you would just sort of say like, this is what happens when there's an alert. This is what happens when you highlight. This is what a form looks like and just move forward from that. Make it easy. I always make these design projects harder than they need to be. So once we get the design done, hopefully on Monday, 
I'm hoping, I think Monday is a reasonable thing. We'll actually start doing framework setup. Um, I think this is not going to take a long time. I've got most of it. I've got all of it going. I just will need help understanding how some of this stuff works. We'll set this into a private repo. Um, so that part is like always something to spin up and make sure that there's no messing around with committing it and all that crap. Um, and we're going to build in that auto update feature and then do another thing to scan for dependencies, which I don't know, there might be like an easy or hard way to do that. But what we want to do is make sure that this command or a nanobox command, uh, comes back and says, yep, yeah, nanobox is installed. Cause like, let's say if we were trying to write, like look for microbox, we want to read this and say, nope that dependency is not installed, here's a way to install it. So when you install uh, MAGA, it'll come, I don't know if we'll, we we'll probably won't bundle these things. We'll just say, this is where you can get this and this is where you can get this. MAGA manager, that's not a bad one. Oh man, that, that marketing site, it will be going up. So when, just, just to do a side note, uh, when we're done with MAGA, guys, my plan is to do apps for the rest of my life. That's the plan. So we're going to get MAGA up. We're going to make it look pretty. And then we're going to go back and we're going to launch Badger. And then we're going to find something else to work on. I have plenty of ideas. All of these two post-it notes. Oh, you can't see them. Post-it note one and post-it note two. Those are more apps. I got more apps than that, though. We have a list with like too many in there so we want to make sure those dependencies are there and install them if they're missing and then we'll take that at the end of this week and we will deliver this out to the discord and <laughs> so, and, and you guys will be able to see it and we can mess around with it the whole thing because i think that'll be so much fun that like we can be doing a stream and unlike every other stream i've ever done like where you can't really mess around with what I'm working on unless I either end grok tunnel the thing out and then you're just going to go in and break my app or if I, you know, like host it somewhere, but then I've got to continually update the hosting. This will be so cool because I know as part of the build process, we can have it like I'll commit it. And every time I commit it, you'll get an update. It'll be kind of fun. So after we're done with this, and again, I don't think this will take too long. I think that like by the middle of next week, we'll have this work in. This might even be like one day, right? One day. I kind of like Mega Manager. This, so we get the the one day of development time in here. And then hopefully next week, we're also hitting the actual development phases. So this will be when heavy development begins. We may want to start this out with some data modeling. Um and say like, well, what does a product look like? What does a project look like? What do components look like? So at least to like edge out the data model. And we'll kind of go from there. Like that, that'll that probably dictate a lot of the rest of this. And even just getting the idea of like, well, how do you define a data model inside of Vue and inside of Electron? How do you... You know, I, I ideally, I know that Vue is sort of like the V of MVC, but I would love to be able to at least have an M also. Like, I don't know what that looks like, though. And if I'm being an idiot for even bringing it up, you guys can just correct me. But I would love it if we had models and things like that to work from. Um, so we're not going to build our own framework, but we might build on top of Vue a little bit. Uh, Revolt, my streaming schedule, we're not super clear on what it's going to be yet. Um, it's going to be at least three days a week. So you can count on three days a week. I don't know if we're going to go to five. I don't know if we're going to go to four. It might be like dependent on the week. So this week I'm going to do tomorrow and Friday and I'm going to try to get on by like one or 2 PM Eastern time, which is seven hours before now. If you need to like figure out what that is on your clock. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably, that's probably what we're looking at. Uh, do I still have commitments to my other partner or is Armatum the main focus? Lewis, that's like a little, it's a little shaky. Like 
I do have some commitments with him. Uh, I don't want to get into the details, um, but I would say for now, for right now, Omatum is the main focus. Like, and we're going to put less of a focus on <clears throat> kind of like sticking. So, so just to kind of give you an idea, we're going to just put a focus on launching products on the stream. And we're going to find people to take over the rest of the stuff. And we are not going to worry about it. We're not going to worry about things like marketing and promo. We're just going to be creating cool stuff. I like, like, MAGA is a pretty big project. But we had talked today about doing, like, one-day product builds or, like, three-day product builds. I just want this to be a cool place where we can hang out, build apps, like, you know, like, just kind of do these fun projects. And if the projects have some monetization component to them, I think that we can like, we can bury a stream in that. So this isn't about my startup anymore. This is more about me and you and anybody watching kind of having fun with the development process, having fun uh, making stuff. Yeah. So back to this, the local deployments, I think what we're going to do towards at the end of a local deployment uh, cycle uh, where we'll say that the two or three weeks have happened is going to be when we can launch a box using whatever we're going to use to do that and we can control the box. So all this is just sort of a fancy way to say launch the box, control the box. Uh, and that'll include things like getting into the box, like actually interfacing with it. It's going to include things like, and of course, if you have to get into it, it needs to have DNS. And if we can, it would be great to see the resources that the boxer is consuming, which nanobox don't do. So we're going to see if we can get that going. And that will be kind of mired down. So those pieces are actually pretty easy, minus the stats and stuff like that. Those are real easy things. They're command lines. They already exist. It's just like get the command line to run and it's going to do it. What's going to be hard about it is configurating, configurating going to configure it it's going to be conf configuring those components so we have to uh consume a yaml file which i don't think is that hard i looked up some libraries we'll be able to take the yaml break it into a javascript object and then do with it as you do with javascript objects and then say back to yaml and it just like bleh. We'll just write, writing to the file system is super easy with Node. It's scary how easy it is. Like, it's like, it's like the, like, I was going through it and being like, man, this is like very, e you could easily throw a thing in to scan all the files on somebody's system and just report that back, you know, how you want it to report it back. Because side note, that shit, that. Ah, they keep swearing that stuff is uh it's real like that is how if you want to know how people extract information off systems you don't do it by just sending files off the system you batch them so you just like if you if you've ever if you have an interest in internet security or security stuff that's how they do it like a, a malicious actor will go in scan a file system say we're looking for something called uh, accounts.txt or something. If they were just like wholesale send accounts.txt off the system, you might see that in the network. The firewall rules might see that in the network. The admins might see that in the network. So what they do is they just chop up that file like like a RAR, like a, like a multi-library RAR, chop it into 50 pieces and send it off little packet by little packet, like in normal system operations. There was a hacking group out of China that, stole like terabytes of information from U.S. defense contractors by attaching it as characters that would hit a header in the email ser servers. So this little tiny like header would just move out like 10 characters at a time on every email it sent out. It's amazing they found it. So you can do that. We can do that with Electron. We can go through people's systems and do stuff, but we won't. And that's... <laughs> That's a guarantee because you guys will be able to see the code, right? As we're developing it, you'll be able to see the raw code. And I'm just telling you, it's a real thing. It's scary to me that like there's a browser sandbox that exists for the web, right? 
did anybody in here has have any of you ever questioned downloading Discord or like Slack? There's nothing in there that I mean they would get in trouble. There would be a news story. Yeah, that's why we're worried. But there's nothing in there saying like you shouldn't do this. There's not there's like the, you would be hard pressed to find a law. There's no permissions that you have to grant to these apps. So once you hit install and you open it up, that thing can do whatever that thing's going to do. Like it could scan your file system, find all the pictures and like slowly move them up, move them up and out, you know, kind of scary. <clears throat> that's exactly why we want obfuscation so we can hide those things in the app. But no, I mean, really like we've got to, you have to understand that like this is one of those rare things. It's like the web used to be where you can do these things but you shouldn't. One of the big reasons Adobe Flash has come off the market and is kind of getting killed is not because it's a crappy thing. Like it's part of it. Flash is sort of like a memory hog. It's easy to write bad Flash code. It's kind of like an unoptimized thing. But do you under like you guys understand that people used to like you for a really long time could inject executive uh, like you could in uh, uh, inject executions through Flash because there were just so many vulnerabilities with it. You could like push files to somebody's system right through a, a banner on a website and you would be none the wiser. Like there, that's, that's crazy stuff. And flash was a vehicle for that. And the web as a whole, like the brow, the main browsers like Chrome and Firefox, and all these things, they're like, they're sandboxed. Like that's how secure they are. Yes. Exploits do come out, but they are like walled off from the system in really big ways. An electron app is not walled off one bit. Like I can, yeah, we could do a lot of stuff with it. Like, and it's kind of scary. So we just have to know that. So I w just so you guys know, I will never give you access to the discord or sorry, to the discord, to the electron end of the app. I, I you can look at it. I'll, I'll code review. That's fine. But I will never give somebody commit access because that scares me. <laughs> like, like it really scares me. Um, yeah, Demon Wolf. I'm back, baby. The streams will be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to try to do more formatted streams, get more done in less time. Uh, so if I don't seem like I'm talking with you guys, I'm sorry. I, it's not intentional. Um, the music might also change. So that could be a thing. <laughs> Like we might not have the, the great music that this channel was built on. Is my company back? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, Demon Wolf, we're, we're sort of playing this by ear. So we're working under a product that would live under the incorporated entity, but I'm I'm not treating it like I was, man. I don't really think I want to get funding. I just want to build cool stuff with people, community of people, not worry about making money so much and just sort of like, you know, have fun with work and have a nice flexible life and spend time with my daughter. That would be big for me. See, I, I might have a picture of her. Hold on. Where's the, yeah, it just, Oh, of course you guys can't see it, but the picture I have today is of shampoo. How do I open, how do I open this? You guys should see my cute little girl. I just gotta look at this. <laughs> Memories from 2018. This is what I'm talking about. Why is my memories from 2018 a picture of freaking shampoo? Um, <laughs> how do I view it on the web? Yeah. Show it to me on the internet. Listen. <laughs> uh, where, how do you even open this thing up, man? Download my photos account. My photo. Uh, back up. I gotta hit that button. We just move, I gotta move it because uh, Christy breastfeeds, and sometimes we take pictures of that. It's for us. But no, sometimes just that those things are just out. They are just out on a walk. Sometimes. Um, you gotta see this little girl though. She is adorable. Boop. Look at that cutie. Look at that cutie. And like, like, I don't know, man, like, uh, I, I'll just like, you know, just say like, you have a choice in life 
when you have a little, when you start a family and it's one thing with your wife, like, because my wife understands things, right? And she gets that not every, not everything has to be about me and her. Sometimes it's sometimes like I will do stuff for our family. Like I'll go and work and not spend time with her for our family. Um, and that's just an acceptable thing. My little girl doesn't know that. Look at this little cutie. Oh, look at her. She's got some of my features, I think. I don't think I need to have the paternity test done. But, you know, she's so cute. She's got like the half half of my wife and half of me. It's nice. She's um, 14, 14, 16 months old. I think in this picture she's like 14 months old. She's like 16 months old. She's talking like she's got words that make sense to her. And she's like trying to use them, man. Uh, Crace, because Launch Rock doesn't do H SSL. So we just, if somebody wants to make a better MAGA.io, please, that can be a thing. You can, you could do that by my blessing. But I just want to make sure we can get the emails somewhere that, you know, need to go somewhere. Um, but look, like there's that Homer Simpson thing. Do it for her. I don't want this to be my life <laughs> where I'm like, like working somewhere and it's like, do it for her. And I'm like, just at my office all day. Um, and as a side note, like I had some stuff pop up that would be like that, that it would be like 60 hour work weeks and good money. But it, like, look, man, I get to see my kid. So I want that to be my goal. My goal is to like be a dad first and then do this other stuff second. No, I take that back. Dad plus do stuff. Same level. Husband second. No. I don't know, but you know what I mean? Like, I just want some flexibility in my life, you know? Really, Torah? Don't do that. Oh, flexible for that. I thought you were telling me not to be a father, which I get. Like, people do that. Oh, no. No, I mean, I got an open SSL through my DNS. It just, I, look, guys, not gonna it's not gonna be a big deal like it's a launch rock page we will put an actual server there launched with maga to replace that okay and we're gonna get that sucker doing everything it's supposed to do <clears throat> okay so back to this thing so you kind of understand local deployments they're gonna be a little bit of a bear the custom form builder to me is the biggest bear of it all. The rest of this stuff's easy peasy. Once we get that all working. So to me, what that means is like, we are no problems. We are all systems go on that. Then we're going to send that stuff off. So we are going to have to move that local box over the tubes and into AWS. That's a bear. So we are going to need to store AWS keys and stuff like that. And we're going to have to figure out how to store those things on the local file system. So they're not easy to snag. Um, we're going to have to like have guides on how to set that stuff up. Um, we're going to have to, once it's, once it's over there and like deploy, well, first of all, getting it deployed is crazy, but we're going to have to like download the catalog of things so we can turn on an appropriately sized, instance to handle whatever server they're sending over and our whole goal here is like to get it over there and to manage it like so we can look at it we can see the stats of the box and then get those reported through the pulse um, back to the front end of the desktop app this might be <clears throat> the this well not might this will be the point at which we decide whether whether or not web services need to stand up because there's pieces of this that I think work fine when you don't have a web service to do things like hold the logs or handshake that stuff. Like that's fine. We can do it off a desktop. Like it's not a big deal where we get into trouble. It might be like, we can't figure out a good way to hold the logs on the server. Right. Cause 
I mean, maybe that's it though. Maybe that's, you know, it's just going to be the challenge is like getting those servers to get this plug connected to them and that plug can start pulling information and we get the servers to log and hold the information. I don't know. Because I'm guessing what Nanobox did was they just had like this pulse moving out and that pulse was just like recorded in their system based on an interval. And then that was displayed back to the front end for the user. We're going to try to get around that. So we'll see. Um, but at the end of this, it's just a single instance component that's going to go up there, meaning like one, at this on AWS, it'd be one EC2 box that's holding the web services, like the workers, the database, all that crap. We're going to try to, at this point, we're going to need an S, we're going to need a DNS server. So I would like to give somebody in here a job. And that person is Tora. Tora, you've been on a domain streak. Um, can you just give us some options? So we need like a, we need a DNS um, to uh, hold applications that are being built. So <clears throat> like when I'm building, when I'm building, um, whoa, whoa, way over there. When I was building on Nanobox, it would be like app name dot nano app dot io or something like that. And we don't need to do the app name part. Essentially what this is, this is a place to point the CNAME. So it makes it so like when you have your own domain, you point it at that CNAME and then this points to the load balancer on the server. So then from there, the load balancer just says like, cause your EC2 or digital ocean boxes might, they might change their IP addresses or whatever. So the load balancer handles all that. So what we need is our own thing. And I would prefer it's not on like an expensive domain name uh, service. And I would prefer it's on like something that I, I you know, I wish Noel was here, um, Bane Gaming. Because Noah works at ICANN, and ICANN handles all the domains, right? They handle, like, the rules around the domains. And I swear that .io domains are slow. Not, like, from a time-to-first-byte perspective, but if I try to update the DNS on a .io, it takes longer. Like, it, it legitimately feels like it takes longer. And that might be because... Dot io is <laughs> it's like some rinky dink is it like a de facto country the british indian ocean territory did you guys know that was a country the british indian ocean territory does it even have a wikipedia page yes oh great like do you see the map of the british indian ocean territory this is where dot ios are I don't know. I mean, do they manage them out of here? <laughs> it could. It if you were looking for that flight that went missing, it's probably right around here. This is just out in the middle of nowhere. That's unreal. So this little island, I guess. Can we turn the satellite on? It's like Survivor Island of domain names. So this is where they come out of. There's like one house here. There's some, those are barracks. These are like silos and barracks and stuff. So they must, somebody's putting jets there. Somebody's got some war plans. Right? It's exactly GT. This will be gone. Got a church. The people, this can't, I mean, there must be like a thousand people live here or something, but those are helicopter pads. Oh, yeah. This is, like, for sure. Oh, it's Diego Garcia. Isn't that, like, we have a military base. That's a military base. That's a U.S. military base, Diego Garcia. Well, that would explain the boats. <laughs> that would explain the missiles on the boats. Um, so, yeah, that's where they come from. So, I, I don't know if .io is, like, the smartest thing to, to do for DNS, uh, but this would be something the equivalent of, and again, the app name doesn't have to be things. So we don't have to worry about that. It could be like garbly gook dot maga something dot app or something. 
Um, thought something. Uh, so it, it could, it, it really, I'm open on this as long as it's not like $300 a year to hold the domain. So Tora, I, you've been on a domain name streak. I think you've got, you've got the, the magic that we need to find this. Please find it. <laughs> hey, let's this part right here. Yeah. Just whatever you come up with, man, we'll, we'll talk about it. Just hit me up somewhere and let me know what you come up with. Cause I don't think it has to be anything big. Cause again, like we're going to point the C name at this thing and the load balancer is going to live on it. Nobody's well, I don't know if nobody's the right word. People, they might run their stuff off of it, but only in testing. So it'll disappear once they buy their own domain. So there's other pieces here, but you know, like we we're definitely going to make it so you can add an SSL uh, that's easy peasy. Let's encrypt easy peasy, breezy, like SSL is no problem. We may, we may or may not go deeper with the SSLs at this point. I think we just leave it with let's encrypt because we're not, I don't know if I'm really like equipped to cover the, the casing of like custom SSLs or self-signed or third party SSLs. We could just leave that out. Um, Yeah. So the remote deployments, I would call that check once we have the ability to kind of like stick one of these boxes on any of the adapters and turn it on, turn it off, and that's it. Just turn it on, turn it off. Maybe do, maybe in here, no, we'll leave it out. We'll leave it for this part. So we'll just call that done there. And then we move into the fifth phase of development, which is the remote scaling. So the remote scaling is... Uh, going to be two two big pieces. Uh, the first one that we're going to hit is the ability to take that single instance, so that's like a single EC2 box, and move it right onto other EC2 instance types. Um, so if you look up, like, well, what does that look like? Well, it's like EC2 instance types. Um, this is your standard, like, you know, A1 mediums, large, extra large, 2X large, 4X large the metal. And what I love to do is like make sure that we can display all this information and the costs, right? Cuz EC2 pricing, it's like the most they do not do a good job with the pricing. AWS guys, if you're watching, talk to your freaking people that f- show you the pricing. Okay? Please. Please, please, can we stop pricing things in hours? Okay? Can we do that? Do you not even, ha- they still don't even have a button that says like, well, just tell me what it costs a month. Like who, who would know this? Who would just be like, yeah, I'm going to stand up. And what is even going on here? Like this is unacceptable. It's like new block or something. It was really, it was ad blocked. <laughs> so we want to take that and deobfuscate it. And I don't know, I guess longer months, it costs more, <laughs> but we could say like, you know, roughly, like an EC2 box at this thing, price estimate it, whatever. But who, oh, they finally have a monthly thing. Okay, I'm happy now. EC2 guys, it's okay. I'm sorry, AWS guys, with the doubting. But this little system that you've put in, I can't even scroll it. How did you, how did you manage to pull this off? Is this React? I'm guessing that's React. Does this look like React? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> but scrolling that slow it just it's like that feels like react oh 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 uh yeah i don't know it's got a lot of it's got a lot of attributes i don't know is there a way i can see if it's react cuz i'm almost certain it's <laughs> ember that you saw ember in there okay well yeah that'd be your problem ember why not just do knockout? Ember? Ember's the reason we have React. Ember is like, oh no, it's the, that's their font name, Amazon Ember. <laughs> Ember is like, it's like the thing that created the need for the wor- the worser thing. <laughs> that's what I say. It's like, oh, we had we had to create the bear because we had a raccoon problem. <laughs> 
that was caused by a rat problem, which was caused by a fly problem, which was caused by a flea problem. You know, like an, an ember is like in the chain of things right before react. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, Justin, thank you. That's like a good question. I don't, so I personally don't like react and you personally might love react. Okay. Uh, but I personally don't like it. It's my personal opinion. That's all it is. I wouldn't recommend it to somebody if they asked me, but you use whatever you like, because at the end of the day, it's just about getting your project done. It's not about like doing what everybody else is doing for the sake of doing it. Uh, I am using Vue.js, like GT, GT said. I've never used it before. I personally don't even like Vue. Okay, so like my my general opinion on stuff like this is if you're, well, Vue makes sense to me for something like this because I don't think this is a complicated project. Um, the more complicated the project gets, I wish people understood that there is a point between the gradient of like, I'm building a portfolio site, I'm launching Facebook. There is this point where it makes sense to make your own thing, okay? Make your own library, make your own framework. And I know that's really hard as a beginner to understand, but as you work on stuff more and more and more, you get to a point where you're fighting the library or you're fighting the framework. And you just say, man, if we had just done our own thing from the get-go, that would have been a lot easier. For most things, you're not gonna hit that point. But like if if you're rolling something fairly big, like Facebook creates React, right? For their problems, for the things that they are running into. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? Google creates Angular for some of the problems that they were having. I don't know if they ever had a successful, like if they keep, if they kept using Angular or not. I really don't. I know for a while, like YouTube was built on it. Um, but yeah, anyways. No, you're, you're, so Justin, that's like a really, it's a common thing. Okay. And what I would hope you take away from this is that when you ask other people, like other developers, should I use this or should I use that? Dude, you're going to get the most, like the worst answers ever. Unless the answer is use what you want to use. Like I can help you evaluate different solutions. You're getting somebody's opinion. Uh, a lot of people treat coding languages like religions and they treat they treat the the choices you make as like black and white but let me tell you you can build anything on anything but the problem is going to be you hit something like this and you have a simple window like this which for i don't know if you can see look at the size of that scroll bar that's like chunky and that's because they made a bad choice somewhere right hey lichen yeah my yeah, build Facebook. That's so. Anyways, we are gonna <laughs> stick instance pricing inside the remote scaling thing, and the instance uh, pricing will help somebody uh, see how much it's gonna cost and like basically create the scaling situation before it occurs, so they get an idea. And then with that single instance scaling, which again is just moving a box from like an EC2 micro to a small to a large. Um, we will then do the hard part of making sure that happens and nothing goes down. So that will usually mean like <clears throat> you take the existing box and you just leave it alone. You stand up the new box, the bigger box, you transit everything from box A to box B somehow like question mark, question mark, question mark, step three, completely unclear. Um, somehow that happens. And then box B, where you saying we're using numbers or letters box two <laughs> was, will then take the load balancer, which is directing traffic at the first box and then direct it to the second box. And that'll just flip. And you leave the second, the first box there for a few minutes, make sure everything's good over here, spin it up. If everything's spun up correctly, delete this box. So the user stops paying for it. And now everything's on this guy. And if anything fails here, you delete this guy and you say something failed and you point back to this one or you keep it pointed at this one right there. That's real hard to do. That's like problem. That's like DevOps Superman problems to do these things. Um, 
I'm hoping Nanobox has it all in their existing code base because that would make things easier. But if they don't, we'll write it and we'll figure it out. Because I, I, I imagine, I mean, geez, there's got to be patterns that we can follow. Um, we'll, we're going to complicate that even more with multi-instance hosting. And multi-instance hosting is like, you're going to have a, instead of having everything under one box, you're going to have like an EC2 for the web, an EC2 for the database, an EC2 for the worker, another worker, EC2, another worker. And then you're going to have an EC2 for the platform, which is like your load balancer, etc., And maybe another EC2 for unps, and then maybe a S3 for data, right? Like this is a multi-component setup. They are multi-instance setup. And this is the stuff of nightmares for anybody who's ever done it. This is, I think, why MAGA is going to be such a valuable app. This is where I see it being valuable. Um, and ugh, sorry, got, got a, a beard hair made its way into my tongue. Um, this means that little dance of standing things up has got to happen like across all this stuff. Now it's not like the worst thing ever, right? Like you can tell whatever components use the database, you can tell them where this thing lives because you've got a load balancer that's pointing to you and all this stuff. So it's not, I, I, it's going to be a bear, but I don't think it's going to, it's not impossible. It's obviously not impossible. We can figure it out. And the really tough part is going to be this, like a data, a database, not so much a data container because expanding like doing what is it? I don't know. I think EBS elastic storage or whatever um, on S3, that's like not a problem or not even S3 on an EC2 or not an EC2. You know what I'm talking about? There's like elastic servers for storage. You want to add space to it. You want to subtract space from it. It's not a problem. Um, where it becomes a problem is in a database where you've got reads and writes occurring. I imag I don't know what you do. I don't know how that works. Like how you can keep the database there and it continues to catch readings and writes. You, you, and then you scale that into a new container and then you somehow have zero loss of data. I don't know if you have a buffer or something like that and things get slow for like half a second and they all move through the buffer and then all the data sinks. I just don't know. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> and it, like, yeah, this is like, it, 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 you can't do things like this with any downtime or else you have Heroku. And this whole thing is a Heroku killer. I'm coming after you, Salesforce. So once we're done with that stuff, um, we'll be figuring out if we need web services. Okay. Just figuring it out. I don't know if we will. I guess at the bare minimum, we're going to need to do payment capture. And we're going to need to have the ability to have some analytics that are flying back to the server, but because of things like GDPR and because of things like CCPA, which are going to be very much things we consider for the project. GDPR of course is the European um, general data protection regulation or something. Um, and it gives us, gives us as developers a lot of rules we have to follow when it comes to consumer data and gives t us the requirement to create controls to delete the data, um, to expose the data, um, to disclose sort of what we're capturing, who gets access to it, et cetera. Um, that's now been like for a while, it's something you didn't have to pay attention to as a U.S. company unless you had customers in Euro and you wanted to travel there. That was <laughs> right. Cause like you, if you could, you could ignore it and just be like, well, we're never going to do business there. So good luck enforcing it. But now we have a new contender CCPA. So CCPA is the California consumer privacy act. It was signed into law. It now exists. And on January 1st, it will go into effect. Now it is the biggest piece of legislation ever passed in this country for this kind of stuff. It is like our equivalent of a GDPR. Now, it's not a federal law. So there's you're not going to be able to enforce this federally. You, you can definitely enforce over state lines. So if you are a business who has a customer in California, which how could you not 
you have to follow the rules. And there are some caveats, unlike GDPR. Um, one of the caveats is that you really right off the bat don't need to worry about it. You really don't because they, they're saying, look, we understand the businesses, like this puts burden on them. So if you're making more than $25 million, you have to start worrying about it. Or if you have more than 50,000 users, you have to start worrying about it. And I think there's a third provision to it, but those are the important ones. Like you don't have to do it at zero users, 50,000 users, then you got to worry about it. But you have just as much strict stuff as GDPR. You have, you have to be able to let users delete their data, see where it's going. You've got to be able to say like it does X, Y, Z, or it's go, going to X, Y, Z. It's, it, it, it's a lot of little pieces that were, it, it makes this stuff harder to do. You know, as you guys that have wired up GDPR, like Slayer, who was in here, did a lot of this work. It like, it makes it less fun, <laughs> so, yeah, you're, but it, there's a reason for it. And that reason is Facebook because they screwed us all by selling everybody's data to everybody and Google. They screwed us all. So we're going to keep that in mind as we set up web services and we're, especially as we're capturing analytics because we'll need to do a disclosure of this stuff at some point. Well, not even just because, um, but we're going to have to do a disclosure of it. So, you know, we have to, we don't want to take more of this than we need. And we don't want to take anything scary because the old school way of doing this may have just been like, Oh, just get everything. Like I want to know how many files are in there. I want to know what the projects are made up of. If it's JavaScript or PHP, I want to know if there's, uh, how they're deploying, where they're deploying. We're going to keep it simple and just be like, well, how many times are they logging into the app? How many projects do they have? How many unique systems is this app being opened from with this this key? And what sort of usage per day? And by usage per day, I literally mean hours, minutes, and seconds. Like a timer that's just going to report back and say, the app was opened at this time, it closes at this time, just so I can get an understanding of like how long it's up on somebody's screen. Um, and then we need on a way to nuke some of the keys. Cause we're going to say to people like, just like the sublime text license, you can use it on your own computers, but don't share it. We're not gonna be able to figure that out. But if we see this thing being booted up on five computers or something, we can nuke the key and just be like, look, you broke our policy or something. And then they'll just pirate it. Um, <clears throat> And then to cap, capstone the project, we'll design a simple marketing site. And again, I mentioned earlier, guys, so we're not with these streams going to be getting into the actual marketing efforts. Uh, that's just going to go on to somebody else. Um, but we're going to design the marketing site. We're going to, you know, put the guides together and then we're going to launch the sucker. So that should be all in like 10 to 12 weeks. But being optimistic. I mean, you guys have seen me work. You know that sometimes I overestimate or underestimate. Um, I feel like just so I'm getting this out there, I feel like these pieces are really clearly tiny. These pieces may be tiny. I might be seeing them as bigger than they are. I don't know. Cause like, I think, whenever I'm moving up into this like two to three week territory, I'm more or less saying like, I, I don't know. I would say like best case, we could get them done in a week each. Um, I guess I'm just being conservative, trying to cover. Web services, probably not a week. Remote scaling, this seems about right at two weeks. Uh, but again, I don't think it'll take that long. I think it seems like to me, it seems about right, but how hard could this be? I think that really these two things, those will happen real quick. This is going to be like banging our head. It's like an optimization problem, right? It's going to be hard to test it and verify it. And we're going to have to like slam it with data and all. it's just going to be a mess. This might take a few days and a marketing promo. That'll be quick. Well, well it might be quick. It might be like one of those fun sites that where we spend like a week making a landing page. And yeah. Uh, Tora. So Tora, you found two, domains or oh, you found one i don't know maga magic.me i would say the shorter the better and again it's that weird dot 
is there like even just a random dot com I think might be better because I think the dot coms are quicker, but I I might be totally wrong. I wish again I wish Noah was around because he knows these things. So that's pretty much like the project. I don't know if anybody had anything to th- around it. We could talk about money a little bit, like monetization of the platform. Um, here's my thought on how we make money on this thing. Uh, this is like one time, like, I don't know. What do we, what do we think people would pay for this? Like 80 bucks, 80 bucks. Um, and I think that it's free. I think it's free to use and maybe at some point around this area of things happening, like between the local and the actual deployment. Well, not the local. I would say, let me pull it um, somewhere between here and here. You say you pay the money. <laughs> like this is when you pay the money. Cause like, I don't know. Maybe it's just like you let them deploy. I don't know. I think we got to figure it out, but this will, I think just like a one-time thing. I'm sick of paying subscriptions for things. I'm sure other people are too. So just one time. Uh, there's another idea we had, which I can talk about now that we're in the monetization. Um, we had this idea. Nope. An ad. So if we wanted to keep it free, I think because of what this is and how much it's going to be open on a desktop, we could run ads on it. And you would just have to have this little ad here (laughs) that would be something relevant to you. And that's it. Like, we could probably look at this $80 thing as a no ads. And in the middle, ads. So you pay the money, get rid of the ads. Okay, this is, uh, my system's like rebooting right now. It's like, <laughs> that, that wasn't fun. I don't, I've been thinking, I don't know how I'd do it, but I've been thinking about getting like a tiny computer just to stream with. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, let's let's. I, I I assume I'm live again. Somebody give me like a little hey hello in chat. Let me know. Oh, this thing is just oh jeez. Okay, I don't even know what this. Is. Uh, that it? Cool. Okay, good. Thanks, thanks, Lewis. Um. Let me move this. Look at this crazy thing. Just as a, as like a cool thing. This is gorgeous. What they did with OBS. Like I don't, I used to have to open up like five things when I started streaming and this makes it a lot easier. I don't know how much of it's like controlled here, but yeah, just that. It's pretty cool. Okay. So let me open up illustrator again and just, we'll go through the rest of the monetization. And I think, I think like the feedback, I would love to get some feedback on it because we've been playing with these numbers. So again, like if you had a, a tool that's basically ad supported, I, you know, from my perspective, I don't care. Like if you pay for it, like I would love for you to pay for it. I really would. But if you just use it, then at least there's sort of like that mutual benefit, you know? Oh no. Is that thing gone? Oh, it's gone. Okay, well, we'll just make a little little tiny thing just to kind of keep keep going through it. So if you say like the app is 80 bucks. Hey, Tora. Yeah, my I did an overclock on this system and it does well in the initial stress test thing. Um, but for some reason at like the two or three hour mark, it just, it just like keeps doing this random thing. I, I don't know what to do to fix. It. I don't know if I, I don't know much about overclocking. Um, 
I guess I just need to add more voltage. Is that that's sort of the trick, right? You kind of keep adding voltage until it's stable or whatever. But it feels stable. I can hit this thing with eight of sixty four and max the cores out, and the temperatures are good and stuff. I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so if we say 80 bucks or something gets you no ads, um, yeah, I think that could work. And the other thing we thought about for pricing was to do uh, cell domains in the app. Because I think that would be very easy to turn on. It would just be like, now we sell domains. <laughs> like, you could just buy your domain right there. Um, the other thing that I thought could be really like an easy, easy, easy thing would be to like sell hosting, meaning be a reseller for AWS. So when you go to like turn the app on and hold on a second. Uh, so you go to turn the app on and <clears throat> you're eventually going to have to add your hosting providers, you know, at some point you're going to have to say like, okay, yeah, I've got AWS, or maybe you don't have any. If you don't have any, then we could just, I would be very transparent about this and just be like, if you click this link, we'll make like five bucks, so please click this link. And it'll just be that referral link to, you know, get a get an affiliate sale through one of these guys. I think there's other stuff down the road we could look at, but I think the $80 one time for the ballers, because the reason I thought this would be good pricing is because that's what Sublime Text costs, and I think this is like a kind of similar thing to Sublime Text. Um, the ads will just get removed if that's a thing. Side hustle, domain sales, side hustle, hosting providers. Yeah, so Tora, dude, you're, you're barking up the right tree. This is kind of the idea we had. And I'll talk to you about that one-on-one. -on -one. Cause I don't, I don't want to like put that in stone, but we had this idea of having separate things that we would build as like modules to this main, you know, this platform here, you know, platform. And then you're just kind of plugging in the ability to do some of this stuff because you know, you know, it makes sense. You know that like, you're doing it anyways. Why not? Why go and log into some other thing and create another account somewhere? But once we get into this stuff, I guess, yeah, we need, like, this needs an account. And that, this will blow up. <laughs> this will be a much, much bigger problem than it seems like. Um, all right, bro. Well, I'm, I'm going to be getting off pretty soon, but yeah, good seeing you. So, uh, Lewis, with the all or nothing or MAGA tears, no ads, no ads in deploy, no ads in skill management. Hey, yeah, maybe. I, I Lewis, if you have some ideas, like what we're trying to do is I don't want to nickel and dime people. And I want to create something that just makes sense for you to use it. You know, imagine if you turned on Sublime Text and it's like, it's $5 more to do CSS, right? So we got to be really careful with that. I think we can build valuable modules that do that. And yeah, maybe scale management is seen as a valuable module that it's like, you know, still 80 bucks to turn the ads off, but you, or maybe it's like you get the ads, but you'll never be able to do the scale management without paying. But I don't know. So, so my thought on the ads, just to give an idea, is that you'd have like one dev that's working, let's say like a full day, like eight hour, eight hours for a dev. Who am I kidding? Let's say four hours of actual work. <laughs> and in that time, you've got the four hours, which turns into 240 minutes. Right. And then you can run an ad. They want it every 240 seconds. I think it's about as fast as you can refresh them. So that's every four minutes. Um, every, whoops. So four minute per ad. And then that will equal out to, <clears throat> what is that, like 60, 80, 60, 80, 60 ads? 60 ads. 
And those ads are a, not, you don't make much, maybe like this much per ad, US dollars per ad. So you maybe off of one person would make like six cents, <laughs> you know, but, 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 but if they use it every day of the month, like you're making a buck every month they're using it. It's not bad. And we don't have really any infrastructure that we need to support. So they slowly pay us back. Mm, yeah, I see what you're saying, Lewis. So maybe you're saying, because I think you've got a point that like, I have a friend that's like just getting into development, right? Well, she's done it for a while, but like, she's the reason we're building this up. She's like the main reason we're, we're doing this. She's in this situation where she's just like, I just like, I, I feel so bad for her because she's like, I really want to learn how to do this stuff. And so she wants to learn a lamp stack. She's having a lot of, like, it's a lot, very difficult thing for her. And I, I had a, like, you know, I was like, well, don't worry about it. It's nothing hard. Just like you go and you, you want to set Docker up and like, don't run it through WAMP or XX, the AMP or whatever, the local easy PHP. Don't do that. Like that's going to cause trouble. Like you're going to have a, it'll just become a, you're just pushing a problem down to deployment. So just figure out Docker or figure out VirtualBox and like, just set it up. And I kind of just like left her with that piece of advice. And she's like a week later, like, I still can't get this working. And I feel so bad because it's like, yeah, when I first started developing, that was the same problems I was running into. And so I would work in these dirty environments all the time, like these bad environments that was just stumbling through them. And then, you know, one day I took some time and set up a real, a real deal VM to work off of. And it just became the same thing. It was just like 20 of my projects sitting on one VM and so I think that this this ability to do this just in the local environment is ultra valuable, but it's more ultra valuable to people who are just getting involved. And I don't really want to, you know, maybe I do. I don't know. Maybe that is the right place to monetize because I just feel like if you discourage somebody early, like by putting pricing in, like maybe they would have, you know, they would have gotten a lot of value out of it, but now they're not going to. Um, but I could be wrong because look at Udemy or whatever, or Udacity, whatever these things are where people go, Coursera, they have no problem taking advantage of the suckers. And I don't really mean that like that, but you know what I mean? Like they have no problem monetizing new users, like people that are just getting involved and like, don't know that you don't need to take a Coursera course to learn anything. Like you're going to learn way better on your own than you're going to learn following their stupid tutorials. Like... I hope maybe, I don't care. I don't want them to sponsor, I guess. But <laughs> like, like I just don't think, you know, like I maybe that way we just have to have the mindset. What letters? Nanobox is gone. It's going away. We're taking it over. We're taking, we are working with the open source component of Nanobox and creating a desktop GUI version of it, but it's ours. We're making it. It's ours. That's what it is. How cool is that? So like, it's going to be, it's going to stay open source, uh, the pieces that are open source, and then we're going to create this really cool way to work with that thing that doesn't require you using the command line or logging into anything, maybe. I don't know. So that's the idea. Um, I'll just open up that doc one more time, and uh, i got to figure out why this computer keeps rebooting. If one of you guys knows how to make a computer stable, just tell me. <laughs> it's not even overclocked that much. It's like 30% overclocked. I need the speed, though. This is an old system. She's Look at how long it takes to open up this InDesign. Until, like, I've been uh, uh, kind of salivating because I want to get... I think I'm convinced that the Threadripper build is going to happen. I have talked my wife into being okay with a several, what would it be like six to ten thousand dollar computer? She's okay with it because I think it's going to speed up all this stuff and we'll get the time back, you know. But she's cool with it. So the sixty four core Threadripper, it's going to happen, guys. It's good. We're going to do it. But until that, I think probably until January. Um. 
we're going to have to deal with this piece of crap and <laughs> make it stable. I don't want to down clock it to make it stable, but Hey, Danthus. Uh, so you can actually, we'll just do that. You can see the thing. You can rewatch this stream later. It, none of it should be muted or anything like that. Uh, there's, there'll probably be two though. Cause we lost connection in the middle. And I, all this stream was about Dan was just going through the whole project. Like just from beginning to end, the whole project. And now we're at the end of it. So I guess, does anybody have anything they want to go over with this stuff? Like any ideas? Like we kind of went over the plan, the reason we're making it, the monetization, like it, it's all sort of there. Is anybody interested in contributing, like doing this stuff? Well, the crickets. Um, yeah, okay. So tomorrow we're going to get started and start hitting yeah, this guy right here. So tomorrow we're going to start doing... Probably, it's probably smart to do like, there's like this process we can go through uh, where it's, I don't know how to explain it. Like you're designing, but you're designing with text. So like we're going to go through and kind of scratch into, okay, there's a component for a server. Let's not do it visually. Let's just say it's got like the name of the server. It's got, you're basically building like a data model for a UI. And we'll try to, that's what we'll start with. We'll go and do that. And then we'll follow that up with jumping into Adobe Illustrator because let me tell you, Adobe Illustrator is the way to do web design. Nobody talks about it, but it's the, totally the way to do it. Um, and we'll go through and build <clears throat> those UI components out and get an idea of what the layout's going to look like. It's going to look like every other app that does this. It's going to be like the sidebar of items and then the thing over here. And maybe we can get as much of it done as possible, you know, um, inside of those uh, constraints of like componentizing, componentizing, com component, com 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 compartmental, no, com com hmm. Hmm. making components out of all the design elements and treating it like let's make it so we can design this thing once and just have it extend. So I will start streaming on that stuff tomorrow afternoon. Um, and I think we should get it done. Like at least by the, we'll get it done by the weekend. Tiny script, dude, that's awesome. So most of my problem with this tiny script, the view I can figure out, I can get to the bottom of view. I would love your help in figuring out architecture. Um, there's a, a channel in the discord that's called MAGA product dev. Just let's have a talk in there about any help you have for view or any pointers that you have for go. I can learn go, but I don't know go. So for go, I would welcome all the help you can give. Um, the primary core repo is all in go. So if we, we could look at that just for a second. Cause I, I mean, it's not too late. But I don't want to, you know, I got to be really careful with my stream lengths because I got to spend time with the wife. Uh, GitHub. So if you guys want to contribute, there is a bunch of issues sitting in here that you could go look at. So uh, if you look at the github.com slash moobox nanobox, um, and then we look at what it is. So the box file should tell us it is Golang, and there's some stuff happening. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but basically, this is the command line tool. This is this is the CLI. It's all right here. Um, I don't know how this works. I don't. I don't think did we fi we may have figured out how it was compiling. I think we did uh, because the man the manifest. This this is a lie. The manifest is not how it's compiling. I think it's an artifact that was never taken out or something. It may have been stuck in here at some point to, let me just, I'm sure that's hard to read. There we go. Um, 
So I don't, I think this may have been stuck in here at some point and never taken out because nobody knew what it did. Uh, it's the make file. So in the make file, you can see, yeah, this is doing it. So this is what going off to, I actually don't know. I don't know how to build the, how to, how to clean this up, but it would probably be a good idea to understand this stuff in tiny script. Again, I could totally use your help on something like this. Just so like I, what I, what some of the things that we're going to need to do, right. Is like, if we go into, let's see, like a utility, geez, all these things. Um, let me see if I can find the command there commands dummy. So if we go and we're getting this command that says status and it's doing like, of course it is. Of course it looks like this. If it's like, you know, executed, like, what is this? How is this doing this? Status FN. What's that thing? What is that thing? Is that that, is that the thing that, oh, it finally works. GitHub has been trying to do this for how long now? So then we can jump to it. Oh, it's right there though. That's not as fun. Where is the thing? Yeah, look at this. So we can go see where these things are defined now. Oh, we see all the references. Oh, this will be easier, but still a pain in the butt. Toe cheese quesadilla. I'm making a program that tracks employees' duties in progress. No, not anymore. Tell me where that is. Where does it say that? I've got to, I got to update it. Sorry, this is my first day back streaming after like a long time off, like almost a year. Like my first time back doing a product stream rather in like a year. Um, but yeah, so we like things like figuring out how this works. I, that's just so funny to me. Like it's, you would imagine that it would be here. Display command error processor set. Who knows? Like somewhere in here though is the code. <laughs> Processors, no. Somewhere in here, is it here? It has the thing that's showing how this is printing out. Yeah, it's right here. So what we might want to do, because we're detaching the the um, chief. Here we go. Chief, you can go back and watch this stream and it will have all the information on this, to what we're working on. In a gist, we're creating platform as a service that... Uh, if you're familiar with Nanobox, we're essentially taking over Nanobox. Nanobox uh, got acquired by DigitalOcean. Uh, their code all went open source. We're working with a former Nanobox staff engineer who's maintaining the open source stuff. We're going to make it look pretty, and we're going to make it so it's a GUI instead of command line tool. So anyways, yeah, like things like this. Like we're going to go in and be able to uh, uh, go through and like, I would love it if, you know, we're, to consume that right now, this little command line. I don't know what we would do, like a string replace or something. I don't know. Status, like we just grep the dang thing. I don't know. But if you, so if you look at this, if, if I mean, I guess we could consume that inside of electron, no problem. But it would just be better if, like, we could remove these things, right? Or if we could just get the raw data feed. If we could just say, oh, if we call the command line thing, just stick that into a file, and we'll just grab the file, you know, and, like, it'll be easier because we can take all this stuff and just make it. Because this was, you know, made to be legible here. We don't need it to be legible there. We need it to be machine legible. Um, so just even going in and doing that would be cool. And, and so some of that, might again, might be, like, working with uh, Dan and just saying, hey, we're going to add in a command here that's basically this command, but instead of being status, it will be status underscore MAGA, MAGA status, and we'll just leave all this intact so you can still do this thing, but then our program can call this other one, and yeah. And we'll just leave it all whatever. Bro, is that for real? Add a JSON flag? Chief, is that for real? That sounds crazy. Nanobox status. Oh, you lied to me. You lied or I didn't understand what you're saying. Oh, it's a common Linux thing? Oh, cool. So we, okay. Chief, dude, that sounds awesome. So 
we would just go in and sort of like cre- extend the functionality of that thing to accept the dash dash JSON, JSON. And then there we go. Like we're not stepping on anybody's toes. We're getting a little bit of the code base better. Cool. Tiny script. Awesome. Thank you. So I mean, like the uh, chief, like you can go back and watch the rest of the the stream from today. Um, but that's the gist of it. Like we're taking this super cool tool that let you create these local development environments inside of containers, which I'm granted a lot of things do, and then move them onto your hosting provider of choice. And we're building that. We're, we're kind of like plugging all that stuff back in. And I'm sure something like this, like it, it's probably like, you'll probably, you'll probably love this stream to be honest. Cause most of the stuff we're hitting into is like, this is just the the command line platform, right? Most of what they did, what what that company put together over years and years and years, were making automation, you know, groups. Just basically like ex- abstracting things you would do on a command line, making it so they can take these um, little commands uh, and you know, modify little pieces of this. And I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at, but um, modify these little pieces, then get them out there. Like this is Python, right? Yeah. So like just doing these little, it's basically automation. It's like crap that DevOps guys do and sysadmins guys do. Um, but bundled all together, making it so it's more accessible to people, making it so like as a developer, you can focus on developing and building apps and coding stuff and not on like the learning whatever things you need to learn to move either to digital ocean or AWS or whatever. I think it's great. And the really cool thing is, is the Dan, the guy that maintains the open source thing, he, this is like his passion and I I'm with him. I think like this is probably one of the most valuable tools that could, that we could build. That's like, if not the most valuable tool we could make for a developer. I don't even know what Ansible is, man. Like, just talking crazy stuff now. But if you'd like to follow the project chief, like, we've got a Discord. Um, do I have this? Is this a thing? Is this a thing? I would love for you to, to stick around, man, because I think we need all the technical help we can get. We're gonna keep as much of this open source as we can. There's gonna there's gonna be pieces that we kind of pull off and say like, yeah, like we're not gonna make the payment system open source. We're not gonna, you know, do that stuff. Terraform, yeah. So Der- Terraform, Dan, Terraform's close. Yep. So if we look at Terraform by HashiCorp, um, Terraform, like it's close, but come on, like what does Terraform look like? This is what Terraform cooks lo- looks like. You know, like, so Terraform to me is like, it's definitely in the ballpark. So it was like, what's the other thing? Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kate. Um, it's in the ballpark. So, I mean, I mean, Amazon's got a thing too, like cloud, whatever in the world it is called there. Like, so this is not something that's without um, Amazon AWS. It's not something that's without, you know, competition or other people's in the space these kind of things exist, but Terraform is not fun to work with. It's not easy to work with, <clears throat> right? AWS's solution is a clearly AWS solution. Like it's not fun to work with. It's not easy. Um, I don't know if Terraform even does local stuff. So keep that in mind. We're doing these local things. Um, Heroku is one heck of a, you know, one heck of an option. Heroku is very expensive. Heroku doesn't do a good job in the local environment. Like, so I think Nanobox existed in this beautiful little space, right? It, it existed in this, like, it's not going to be running Google or Facebook or something. It's not even going to be running an app with like a million users. Well, maybe, maybe a million user app, but it's not going to be like, you know, running a bank but it's going to be running those passion projects. It's going to be running the things that 
you are trying to get off the ground. It's going to be running like your little portfolio sites. It's going to be doing like that kind of stuff. If you need Sirius, if you're Uber and you need Sirius, you use the AWS solution. If you're Airbnb and you need Sirius, you use Terraform. If you're, you know, like if you're a big company, you use something else. But that's because you've got DevOps guys on staff. And like you have people that will sit in front of a whiteboard for like a whole day and figure out this whole thing. You know, that's optimistic. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like you got guys. And a box is in the middle. Well, cheese, if you don't like app development, so you tried app development and you didn't like it, you thought it was a step in the wrong direction. Hey, if you don't like it, find something else. Like there's plenty of things. Apps are not the only thing, especially if you like, like it's weird about apps to me is that there's like, I don't particularly enjoy working on mobile apps <clears throat> at all. I like working on web apps. I think I'm really going to like desktop apps. I used to do desktop apps, geez, like in another life, 10, 15 years ago. But like, I think I'm really going to enjoy that because I think desktop is one of these really fun, like, like, oh, look what this can do kind of a thing, you know. There's not a huge, so top case idea, you say you think app development's cool, but there's not a huge market or it's very competitive. It's a competitive Sure, people still make a lot of money getting salary jobs doing it, though. There's plenty of job openings. Um, the market is as big as you want it to be because you shouldn't look like – you don't look at it as, like, app development. Look at it as solution development. That's what you're doing. That's what every app does that. It solves a problem. And that problem might be the person's bored. It might be the person needs to know what their heart rate is. You know, it might be that they want directions to get somewhere. <clears throat> I mean, like, that's all you're doing. You're solving problems. So if you like to solve problems for people, problems that people have, that's what it is. And the app is just a way to do it. And <clears throat> I don't know. I guess it's not for everybody. I love it. I think I, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't want to do anything else. I've tried other things. I don't like them. Don't like them as much. Yeah, chief, you got to figure it out. Yeah. It's like, it's like, and, and you might start like, as you start into it, like it, after college or in college, you might not make that much money. Like that's a possibility. You might have the right thing, right? Like if you have the right skill set at any given time in development, and it's got to be the right skill set. Like you've got to be good at it. And it's got to be like the thing that people are on about. You might make a lot of money with very little skill and like very little knowledge. Um, like I, what, if you have ML, right? Like right now, like cheese, AI stuff, you know, the, the, you make a lot of money with that. It used to be like quant. I think quant still pays really well. Um, but if you don't do that and you just sort of say like, I'm going to work on the projects as they come to me. I'm a software engineer, a web developer, or a mobile developer, yeah, right out of college, you may not be making like crazy money, but you're probably making more than the person that like came out with a hospitality degree, you know, like, so you're, you're going to have like a good quality of life. Like you might be making 40 to 60,000 in your first role. If you get the right job at the right company, that might be like 80,000, but give it like five years and you'll probably be more close to the 80, 90, a hundred thousand. Give it 10 years and you're probably at like 120, 140, 160. And that's like scaled, you know, obviously it'll be more in the future. But it's crazy. Like the develop development's a really good path. And you can at some point figure out if you're gonna go into management or not. And if you do, I mean it's not I think there's kind of a misconception that managers get paid a lot more, and they do, uh, in some companies, but good engineers get paid a lot too. And yeah, you can just you just have to stick to it though. Because this is something where the years of experience you have are really important. Like five years of experience versus 20 is like triple or quadruple the pay, you know. Okay, 
Tochi's quesadilla. I'm going to catch crap for this. Don't listen to people on Reddit. Everybody, like, <laughs> you're getting an aggregation of, like, popular things or whatever. There, There's plenty of really skilled people on Reddit. There's plenty of people, like, that know what they're doing on there and are experts and all that. And let me tell you, as somebody who has been doing this for a long time, like, I've been developing now for 20 years the people that have the loudest voices and get the most play in the Reddit posts and in the comments, I can tell have no idea what they're talking about. I I just see it all the time. I see bad advice on that place all the time. It's just that, that personality that can rise to the top in a place like Reddit. It's just not, trust me, like there's plenty of people that know what they're doing there. They're not the loudest. The people who are the loudest are like telling, they, I, I hate it because I go on there and I've, I've genuinely like will get frustrated. So I don't participate on Reddit for any of the IT stuff, no programming. I don't even participate on there for design. Like, and I started as a web designer. I started as a designer. Um, and that's where I feel like I've got my talent and all that stuff. I don't even go on there. I just can't handle it. Like, <laughs> I just, I just see the stuff posted and I see the trending and I just think back to you know, all I, oh, I just think of all the things that are being done to poison people who are starting in the design field or in the development field. And I just think it, it makes me angry. You can come here, man. You can like come here, come to, come to our discord or find a good discord that you feel good at. And like, trust me, like people are not like that everywhere. It's not a dying field. Noah, you are late for the freaking dance, man. <laughs> no so noah was supposed to join us i don't know two and a half hours ago um and go through like some pieces of this uh we were going to have a little repartee and like i actually I have no idea what we're going to do uh but uh you missed it man you got to go back and watch it i i had a couple of questions come up for you oh, i had one question that was like right in your ballpark i'm surprised you surprised you you survived your ikea run Okay. So I have a question that's right up your ballpark, Noah. Um, so Noah, you can tell everybody where you work and why this is a qualified question for you. Um, but when you're doing DNS management, so we're doing things like swapping A records or C names, is, is there a reason, like, am I, am I crazy in thinking that like an A, like these records take longer to update on different TLDs. Like a dot com will see a DNS update quicker than a dot IO or something. I feel like I might be crazy, but I swear. Ah, so chief tattooed said, yes, they do. I need to get Noah to lock this in. So Noah, you said, yes, records take longer depending on TLD based on the root TLD's default settings. So what is like, let's say, okay. So we are going to have a domain um, like hub that's going to be like something dot something. <laughs> basically we need a place to stick a do, uh, an app at something dot something uh so just like the way nanobox did it was they would say app name dot nano app dot com i think what's the what, what is my speedy what should it what should be this what's the speedy tld because this is like not really important to the business you know like it's just whatever for the business um yeah, generally, what is the speedy speedy guy to work with? Because I'm telling you, like, I think a .io is slow. Like, it took, I, I was waiting, I don't know, like, five or ten minutes to, to see these things update. When I know on .coms, I've seen them just be like, yeah, ten, you know, less than 60 seconds.
Yeah, I mean, Chief, you've got it. So I, it sounds like a dumb decision, but <laughs> could you imagine if we we stuck the I.O. on there and it's like, oh, crap, those things are taking forever. The ISP can override the TLD based on a cache they have locally. Cache bust a single JS. Well, it's going to be the thing of like, we need to provision. So what will happen is like, we will point. This is just a temp. You are all in a sense that is the load balancer. It just points at the load balancer. Um, this guy you point a C name at it with your custom domain. That was some temp file or something. <clears throat> no, we're literally talking, Noah, about DNS like literally domains. So when a user deploys into MAGA, so MAGA handles the deployment onto AWS, we need to have a, um, a like a domain, like a TLD, something dot something, like, I don't know, MAGA domains dot something. Um, and that's the equivalent of this app name nano app thing. That's where the user will point the C name at for their custom domain. No way to force. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to like, like guys, it doesn't have to be the, the whatever thing I'm just curious if like different TLDs are faster than others. Yeah, we can always set it, check it, and then like verify it across five servers or something and then move it up, right? Move the TL TTL up. Uh, yeah, but I'm just, so no way, there's no like, there's no difference between a .io, a .com, a .net, a .ly. Like, that's all coming off the same infrastructure. Not really any labor. So this is just, this is just like some opinion that I was trying to reinforce in my head. <laughs> like, I had like bias against it or something. Then we can just, we can find a cool name then. We can just figure out whatever that, I don't, I mean, it's got to be cheap. That's, that's my way. <laughs> it's got to be, you know, I want that. What is the cheapest TLD we can buy? That's what we're using. What is the absolute bottom of the barrel? Cheap, I, I think we can get even cheaper than dot coms. Let's just get the cheapest one we can find. Is that for real, Lewis? I've never, I've never heard of that. Hey, we hit 1,700 followers. How cool is that? <clears throat> 1,700. 2,000 is the big number. I want to see 2,000 by... What's what's the month are we in? Uh... Yeah, we could do 2,000 by December. That's like only 30 or 40 and 50 a day. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, that's good to know. Does anybody have... Dude, every time that plays. Um, 
does anybody have like anything they want to get into? Cause if not, I think I'm going to call it and we'll do design tomorrow. And in the meantime, there's the discord again, here's the project. So you can take a look at it. Um, but Discord's big, come hang out there. Like we've been pretty good at getting people in there, like in chatting lately. Hey, Blunted, why don't, you, why don't you talk about that in the Discord or you can bring it up tomorrow, man. But really, the the project you should build as a student, um, why don't you just clone Tinder or something? That sounds like fun. Clone Tinder. It's not that much work. The swipes are hard, but make it into like, you know, Tinder for cats. They have to have a paw to move the thing around. Anyways, guys, it was it's it's fun to be back. Uh, we'll be working on this for the next three months. I hope this is like a good way to get started. Just watch the stream um, if you want to catch up. See you later. See you tomorrow.